All right. Ready. Thank you. All right. Uh, oh, last reminder, I forgot. Be sure to say your name before you start speaking. That that helps me um, know who's talking because we don't know all your voices yet. So when you go to answer a question, feel free to start with, this is Adam, and what I'd like to say is, sound good? All right, so getting started, uh, the first question for you guys today is this. What is the big critical issue that is facing the project today? Um, and what is it that the association can contribute to addressing that issue? This is Howard Jacobson. I'll start quickly. And I would say that the, for me, as a not nearly as technically capable as most of the other folks on the phone, but a longtime user, it's just the barrier to entry for new users into uh, putting up a Drupal site quickly um, that looks good, that's responsive, mobile first, um, all that kind of good stuff. And um, I think that's important because lots of people, have, there are lots of choices. There's WordPress, there's Joomla, there's Drupal, uh, Magento if you're doing e-commerce. And people have a limited amount of time to make a technology choice. And the lower we can make the barrier to entry, uh, I think the more we'll see the community grow with uh, new folks with a diverse uh, set of use cases. Thanks, Howard. And you just reminded me oh, of oh, oh, the top of Howard in every way. And, uh, sorry, uh, guys, yeah, let me just uh, pop uh, in for so one, one second. Let me just pop in and just say sorry. I, Howard just reminded me, well, his speaking reminded me, I forgot to introduce you guys. So why don't I run through really quickly the 10 people on the call? I'll give you guys one more moment to formulate your answer, and then we'll pick up uh, we'll pick up with that question. So, um, the candidates on the call today we have Kelly Albrecht, who's from uh, New Zealand, um, and has worked in the project for well, you guys have all worked in the project for quite a bit of time at this point, right? So that's <laughs> I'm going to stop saying that. Um, but uh, uh, sorry, Kelly's not from New Zealand. Let me try this. Let me. Wow. I'm not from New Zealand. You are not from New Zealand. That's Alex. And um, let's just say that the third time is not the charm for me when it comes to these Meet the Candidate sessions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sorry. Kelly works at last, last um, sorry. Are you ready? We're going to start again. Thanks. All right. Kelly, you are from New England. Is that correct? Do we lose him? That's correct. All right, I did it. <laughs> so right here from the good old US of A. Oh, that, that, that's great. It's the delay. Gotcha, that's right, good. Um, Enzo uh, is representing um, Colombian, uh, Colombia here today, although Enzo, you live in Costa Rica now, um, has also been engaged in the Drupal community for a long time and was one of the folks who helped us organize DrupalCon Latin America uh, this last go around. Tom Grady, Grandy is also on the call. Uh, Tom's from, oh, uh, are you still in Ohio, Tom? Yes, I am still in Ohio. Awesome. Um, and uh, so uh, Tom is joining us here from the States. Uh, Rachik Gupta is representing the Indian community uh, here today um, and has been helping us organize DrupalCon Asia, uh, which we will put on in 2016. Adam Hills from the UK uh, has been part of the community there for a number of years. So he's getting ready for Drupal Camp London, I know, um, and has served uh, in a variety of capacities in the Drupal community, including on the um, community working group and has been a longtime volunteer at the Drupal Cons. Um, Howard Jacobson, uh, who's the first voice we heard uh, here today, is also calling in from the, from the US here today. Um, we have Victor Lewandowski, who's calling in from the Ukraine um, and runs a, runs a Drupal shop there in the Ukraine. Chris Lockhart, our Canadian today from Toronto. He's tired of being cold, I found out this morning. <laughs> it's cold up here, eh? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh, Alex Matthews. Alex is from New Zealand. I don't know why Alex and Kelly are the same person in my mind, but uh, you guys don't sound alike, that's for sure. Um, I know, Alex, you must be getting ready for Drupal South right now. Um, and Michael Schmidt, who's been uh, part of the project for a long time as well, and you may recognize Michael. Uh, he works at um, Amazie Labs in uh, Switzerland, and you may recognize him from 
the Drupal cons where we somehow cajole him into climbing under tall things and taking our pictures. So that's a brief rundown of who we've got. Um, Howard, you were able to address that question first. Um, what's the critical issue facing the project today and how does the association, how can the association address it? Who wants to go second? Uh, hi, it's Chris here. Um, can... <laughs> <laughs> Internet delay. Just... All right, I'm going to call on Ratchet because we're having a hard time getting going. <laughs> okay, thanks, Lloyd. So, um, what I feel is uh, the most critical issue at this point of time is awareness. There's a lot of initiatives being run by Drupal Association. There's a lot of initiatives that are being run in different Drupal communities, but how people are getting aware of, you know, what's happening where. I think, I think you know, that is something, you know, uh, something really critical. Especially I'll highlight, you know, what's happening here in Indian community and, you know, different regional community in India. You know, the communities are maturing very fast. We have done Drupal camps, uh, you know, which is like 600 plus, you know, participants coming in and joining the event. But most of the people are not aware of, you know, Drupal Association. What are the things we are doing? There are so many initiatives that they are taking. So I think this is, uh, you know, the point where I think, you know, we probably need to focus on. That's my point. Thank you. Thanks, Rajit. How about Tom? Do you want to answer that one next? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, this is Tom. We can, we can hear you, Tom. Okay. Um, probably the most critical issue I think facing the Drupal project right now is getting Drupal 8 launched. Um, Drupal 8. I think it's way overdue and has had an effect on both the community members like myself who are waiting on the sidelines, as well as those who are actively working on the project who are slowly burning out. I'm just a, a very small developer, but I've watched excitement begin to fizz. Uh, when I went to DrupalCon in uh, Chicago in 2011, the community was just really alive with excitement over what was then a, a newly released D7. And the sessions were just packed with enthusiastic members and, and community. Then 2012 came along, and there were hints of Drupal 8. We were excited. 2013 came with teasers for Drupal 8. And then by 2014, you know, we were waiting for a release. We thought maybe it would be, you know, released at DrupalCon, but it didn't. Uh, the grants that the association has created to speed the release of Drupal 8 you know, have been great to get more people on board, but you know, helping Drupal 8 get released should be the highest priority for the association so that we can once again start to rebuild that excitement that I think is missing right now. And I know me, for one very small person standing on the edge looking in, it, it just you know, is kind of sad, and I'd like to see that excitement come back. Uh, this is Kelly. Let me know if you can hear me, and I'll give it a shot. You're good. You're loading too. We hear oh, okay. you, Kelly. Um, yeah, so I I completely agree. I've been seeing a lot of the uh, Drupal 7 fatigue, uh, e people eagerly waiting for Drupal 8, and uh, really just kind of fading into the background, waiting for it to come out. So I do think that the release of Drupal 8 will re-energize uh, the community in a huge way. In the meantime, I think it would be great for the Drupal Association to seek to find ways to help give support to those local Drupal group organizers and Drupal camp organizers who are doing uh, outreach into the community to help bring the community in to, to you know, do more technology in general and to find Drupal and to be there when, to be there for the excitement of the release of Drupal 8. Uh, hi, it's Chris here. Um, I, I agree with what everyone has said thus far, except I, I want to take maybe a, a further back approach on this or a higher level approach. And, and I think the word structure, structure, structure said three times and even more is maybe the thing that is the most critical issue facing the project. And that's probably the, the one, one area where the Drupal Association can really 
foster and, and spearhead um, all of these other elements, the community building and the, the Drupal 8 uh, initiatives and getting Drupal 8 released and, and that sort of thing. So I think um, forming structure, uh, th there's been a lot of talk in the, in the Drupal sphere about duocracy versus more structure and, and how that's all handled. And I think taking care of that from an organizational level will filter down into other elements of the project itself and that can um, push a release of D8 and D9 and, and things in a more efficient uh, manner and help to steer things through the issue queue and, and community building and outreach to other parts of uh, the Drupal community that are um, you know, multilingual or, or whatever the case may be. So I would say at a higher level structure and uh, you know, well-planned structure is, is probably the most critical issue. Um, I'd like to jump in at this point and just start uh, talk briefly about Michael. <laughs> Why don't we do Michael and then Sorry, I think Michael, I heard, Michael. yeah, I think let's do Michael and then I think I heard Adam. Okay, yes, so that's Michael. Hello. Um, yes, I want to add to what Chris said, and I think for me, it's structure is definitely a good thing. Um, for me, it's also getting the small communities that we already have all over the world um, to connect to each other. Um, I see, especially in Europe, where I from, where I go to a lot of events, I see a lot of small communities not really talking to each other. And I think that's where the Drupal Association really can bring in its global view to know, to get to know all these people and to talk to, um, or get the smaller communities to talk to each other, which are sometimes really close, like, um, especially like in Zurich, Munich, for example, which has its own Drupal community, is really close, because, but because we're living in a different country, we don't really talk to each other a lot. And I think that's where the Drupal Association can also bring in, and then at the end also help get things done, like doing code sprints together, to then again like release Drupal 8. But I, well, that's one of the things why I also said, okay, I want to join in, because I feel a bit that the Drupal Association is especially the board, of course, the staff, because they are important, but is, is a bit oriented to the U.S., um, especially having a lot of U.S. board members in. And so I would like to see other um, board members from other countries in there or other continents to bring in this, the knowledge of the different culture or the ways how things work there. Thanks, Michael. Adam, did you want to tackle that one next, too? Yeah, that's okay. I'll just take a, a minute, but uh, I think uh, the question is a really difficult one because I don't think there's a critical issue for uh, the project at the moment. I think there's multiple critical issues, and I think uh, uh, that, uh, that's not just talking about the issue queue. Um, but um, I think just going on from the the Drupal eight, I think part of the problem is often this the language that's used in the sense of what people are waiting for Drupal eight, and uh, and I think that's part of the problem in the sense of uh, um, uh, people are waiting instead of uh, people uh, getting involved, and I think that the contribution side of things, helping organisations to understand core contribution and the value that core contribution can bring to their developers, or uh, 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 is also really really important. Uh, and that fits into, again, a, a lot of things other people have said, but uh, in terms of what Michael was saying about connecting people and connecting communities, uh, bringing core contribution into uh, user group meetups, uh, bringing core contribution uh, across user group meetups, and, uh, and yeah, as I say, getting more people understanding that they can actually, the value of getting involved uh, in contributing to the core development of, uh, of the project. Uh, hi there, it's Alex Matthews here from New Zealand, and uh, I'd like to strongly agree with everything that's been said so far. Uh, it'd be pretty difficult to disagree with any of the fantastic comments you've all made. Um, however, I would take a slightly different angle and talk more about the other stakeholders that are involved in Drupal. I feel as though the community is really strong and really good and very uh, capable of looking after itself. And the association, I think, does a good job of looking after the developers and the immediate people involved in the Drupal project. However, I feel as though to grow the market share of the CMS uh, and to bring in new fresh blood, it's really important that we're thinking about the other stakeholders that are involved in Drupal, which in my case as a Drupal consultant would be government clients, enterprise uh, clients, the private sector in general, um, but also your local businesses and your cafes down the road. 
at your students at university and high school that are looking for new technology they want to be able to use for their web projects and software projects. So I feel as though I would be more so interested in thinking about them and how can we outreach to them in terms of letting them know what Drupal is good at. I totally agree with all the comments around Drupal 8 and the confusion about that and I feel as though this is a communications challenge and that the Drupal project needs to be communicating better back to those technology strategists and to the uh, technology consultants that actually end up making a lot of the decisions about how web technologies are used. So I feel as though the immediate Drupal community does have uh, a little bit of work that can be done, but I would widen the range and look more at who's actually making the decisions about how Drupal is used uh, in the commercial and practical sense. Great. En Enzo or Victor? Hi. Hi, this is Enzo. Uh, in my opinion, one of the most critical issues in, in Drupal is the, the worldwide participation. And one of the causes of this problem is the language barrier. Of course, English is, is widely used, but it's not good enough to cover the whole, the whole world. So I believe the Drupal Association could help to encourage local community or to help to create local communities in different countries. Um, and stimulate the creation of, of documentation, resources, videos, blog posts, but not in English, in his mother language. In that way, we can bring new developers, new documenters, new technical leads, <clears throat> and uh, with, the, with these resources, we will see um, in, a, in a short period of time how the contributions from countries like um, Af uh, Latin America, Africa, and Asia will, will have a significant increase. Thank you. Thanks, Enzo. Victor, are you still with us? Yeah. Great. Uh, so uh, it, it's Victor Lewandowski. So I think that uh, the main uh, thing that the Drupal Association can give me if I uh, have problem with Drupal, with Drupal project, yeah, uh, I will. If I will need help, I will uh, uh, try to find partner. Uh, yeah, from members of Drupal Association because I believe that uh, uh, members uh, is uh, uh, very uh, reliable companies, guys, yeah, who I can ask help and them will help me, help me with very good quality. Uh, so I think it's the uh, 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 main point of such uh, community, of such cooperation. Yeah, and uh, such uh, uh, help. Yeah, so that's all. Thanks, Victor. Thank you. Yeah, and um, you guys, uh, one thing, uh, we had one candidate join us. Um, remember when I was like, oh my gosh, we're all here. It's crazy. Let's start. It's just kidding. Um, we had one more candidate join us after the fact. Uh, so I apologize for not having um, him uh, in the mix right from the beginning. But uh, we have one more Chris, Chris McGrath. Uh, who is with us. Um, and so, Chris, you have now had a good amount of time to think about how you might respond to that question about what the biggest uh, yeah. biggest thing is that's facing the association today. To keep it to one thing is the is the point, I think. Um, <laughs> so I've tried to artfully interweave, th you know, three <clears throat> so that maybe that uh, I could get, a, get around that. But thanks, thanks very much. And again, uh, seeing as many as started off their response, uh, Every, everything that's been said, I strongly agree with for sure. Um, and I think that uh, for me, I, I really resonated with what Alex was saying that, you know, the product is for our, our clients, you know, and the stakeholders often that are whatever they, whoever they may be from their different uh, markets. <clears throat> and it is important to look at what their unique needs are uh, from a core perspective. But not only that, I think mainly, you know, when we, we think of the association, um, from a governance perspective, and you know, I must say also somewhere to Howard. You know, I'm I am a, a front end guy. I'm a business guy. I'm a strategy guy. I'm a governance guy. You know, as far as an entrepreneur is concerned, but I'm not hands on with the code reviews um, or code contributions from th from a PHP perspective uh, with the the uh, contributed modules. And that, you know, I work very closely moment by moment with back-end developers. So, you know, I have some glimpse into what's going on in the process and so on. And, you know, I, I recently, I mean, let's say like after, let's say three years of working heads down with Drupal every day, I was like, hey, you know, 
what's up with this I hear about you know the, the process of, of, of contributed modules and, and then becoming you know uh, released and so on and peer reviews and you know the different grumbles that we'll see out there there's uh, some threads going on uh, you know right now just about uh, changes that occur in, in a major module that affect you know many many other websites and so on and you know, point, finger pointing things of that nature and I think that you know we, we seem to have our act together with core um, but you know the wider larger more unwieldy problem is really the governing governing process of contributed modules and you know to the best of our abilities what you know being an open source community uh, the the maintenance and sustainability of those uh, modules and I know that's you know always been a, a focus but I think it's something that needs to be uh, truly truly uh, refined and and that as someone who you know crafts messages who helps build organizations and so on you know to me that can only really be done when confidence is high in a good product um, you know and, and for me you know of course that means security and uh, and governance around the core code that is being plugged into these websites you know every second of the every minute of the day you know all over the world so that that's you know what I really think the association could do I, I'd love to be involved in uh, in helping out awesome thank you well let, let's switch gears a little bit um, I, I am um, my ears perked up when Enzo mentioned um, the language barrier that faces the project and how that's a that's a tough hurdle to get over in terms of contribution we have so many people from around the world who would contribute if they could contribute um, you know, potentially in their own language. Um, and uh, that's definitely something we've thought a lot about over here um, at the association. And uh, sort of what immediately comes to mind for us every time is that's really expensive to do. <laughs> um, uh, especially, you know, we, we just did Drop DrupalCon Latin America. We did some live simul simultaneous translation of sessions into English, Portuguese, and Spanish. Um, and uh, it was great that we had someone who stepped up to volunteer their experience in translation, uh, a company called Lingotech, to translate some of the session videos. Um, but every time we try to tackle this, we really run into the price tag uh, of it, which um, which does uh, beg the question for us about how what our funding sources should be at the association. You know, like. Primarily now, DrupalCon's drive uh, the revenue at the association. We've been working on expanding those revenue streams. And I, I would just love to hear from some of the candidates about um, where you think the opportunities are for the association to grow the revenue to support these programs and if there are boundaries around you know, where that revenue can come from. Holly, I'd love to answer this one if possible. Yeah, go ahead. It's uh, Adam, sorry. Yeah, I think one of the big things, uh, I guess I'm talking mostly from, from kind of my experience now, is that I, uh, um, in Europe at least there's a ton of, of uh, uh, grants available and uh, opportunities for funding and cooperation uh, across countries um, uh, for innovation, for technology, um, across all kinds of different uh, themes, um, but, but uh, I think this is a really missed opportunity. Uh, having said that, uh, European organisations. So, kind of comes on to one of the other points I, I've talked about before in terms of uh, how we develop the European, uh, or of course other um, uh, um, outposts, let's say, of the of the Drupal Association. But I think that's one way that could be could be looked into that applying for these funds as a large organisation that already has the infrastructure. It, it's not such a, a crazy thing, and I think it would bring really different um, uh, opportunities to, to the organizations involved across uh, across um, Europe and also the neighboring countries and, and worldwide. Um, just coming on to the, to the language thing, I think we've got to look at it in two ways. One, it, this is an open source community, everyone contributes and I think that from some level we can, we can work with language on a contribution level. Um, and the second one, uh, you know, we, as you mentioned, Lingotech and other language companies are out there. there. There's a ton of Drupal innovations that should be able to help us with that. And I think if we can't, then uh, it's a bit of a worry when there's so much of that kind of uh, um, uh, help within the community.
Holly, this is Howard Jacobson Hi, again. Great, oh, Howard. Go ahead, go ahead. please. No, go ahead, Howard. All right. Um, thank you, Holly. Um, this the situation that the Drupal Association is in is really not unlike the challenge faced by any nonprofit, whether it's supporting a technology or it's supporting research for some sort of disease, and uh, you depend on. Uh, primarily charitable contributions, uh, membership fees, and in, in the association's case, we have DrupalCon as the major source of revenue. Uh, the one uh, thing that I've seen working with some of the local nonprofits here is that uh, relying on charity is a dangerous thing to do because charity generally ebbs and flows with the economy. And when people don't have a lot of money or feel like they don't have a lot of money. Uh, they tend not to contribute as much and nonprofits suffer. So I think the association needs to find more uh, DrupalCon type uh, revenue sources that can make it independent as much as possible of uh, charitable contributors. And there are certainly many other needs in the community, whether it's uh, uh, training needs, um, there are obviously folks out there doing training in Drupal and making good money at it. Um, and while it may be a delicate issue whether to compete with those folks, I think the association's long-term survival depends on as much financial independence as possible. And with respect to the, the language issue, I think it's almost certainly going to be a long time before the association can afford realistically to meet the internationalization uh, needs of all the different countries even represented on this phone call. Um, and what the association can do is bring to bear its community organizational skills to help uh, local leaders, whether in the Ukraine or Costa Rica or um, other countries, to organize their own um, local internationalization translation efforts using as a resource, the, the um, content that the association has available and is and is usable by everyone on an open source basis. Thank you. Hey, Holly, that's Michael. Hi, it's Chris here. Um, it's Tom. Let's go. Let's go, Chris and Michael, because I think Chris, you were trying to get in last time too. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. So I have but, but which, uh, a, a relatively fair amount of experience with. Oh, Chris Lockhart, Thank Canadian you. Chris. <laughs> You're all good to go, Chris Lockhart. Hello? Yep, you're all good to go. Okay, sorry. Uh, so I have a relatively fair amount of experience with the community in Japan. Uh, I've been there uh, two or three times, and, and I've uh, done some work with them on their Drupal camps and uh, trying to deal with the language barrier. And um, I think the thing that I've seen is that um, uh, in terms of funding with money and time, because time certainly equals money and money equals time, uh, as we all know, um, Volunteerism has always been very strong with the uh, with the Drupal community, and um, with a lack of of funding, um, the eagerness has not been quelled. I guess um, the, there are members of that community who are are pushing vigorously to uh, volunteer time to translate um, some of the Drupal books that are are popular, um, and and also um, trying to do translations uh, just uh, you know in in different aspects. Uh, through YouTube tutorials and that sort of thing, um, to explain simple concepts to uh, entry-level Drupal users like views. Uh, the word view in English means one thing, but views means another thing in the Drupal uh, nomenclature, so it's it's a difficult thing for them to, to get around. Um, so volunteerism is certainly a strong thing, and, and again, maybe um, jumping back to the first question about how the DEA can help um, and the issues with the Drupal project, um, uh, th this whole idea of uh, organizing and providing organizational skills and, and um, opportunities for for the project as a whole and, and people around the world trying to get involved, um, helping to organize that is is maybe not a way to make money, but it's a way to save money and time, I think, in the long term. Um, and and again, traditionally, you know, grants and sponsorships are are key thing. Those those things come from government sources, uh, capital uh, uh, interests, and and that sort of thing. So. Um, those are, are certainly key elements of it as well. Thanks. 
Thanks, Michael. I think you were. Um, I'll jump in next. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Right. Who, who's going? <laughs> Here's what we figured sorry. out, you guys. Ten is too I like many. I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we have think, so many awesome candidates. But I think Michael wanted to go. Michael was uh, in line after Chris before, and then we can and then we can move on. Okay, good. Um, yes, I think one interesting thing is that we just shortly mentioned, like that actually um, the Drupal cons are responsible for seventy five percent of all the revenue that the DA makes, and I think. Um, whether that's really cool, I mean, as you said, Holly, it's um, it's important that we try to f to to spread that out. And as the DA board currently already decided, you want to bring that for 2017. We want to bring that down a little bit to to have other streams. And I think one really interesting thing in the Drupal community right now happens is that companies are more and more involved to get known for what they do. Um, we heard that from Dries talking about that we want to show um, what companies paid for or that they sponsored some of the contribution. And I think that actually goes into um, not just having sponsorships where you as a company can sponsor the, a con or just be a member of the or a partner of the association. I think it's more and more specifically that companies can say, okay, I want to sponsor um, the last critical bug that was fixed on Drupal 8 or something like that. And um, because there are all these opportunities out, are out there, um, it just needs a lot of time from the DA to cr generate them or to generate these opportunities to talk to companies. Um, but I think if we provide more of them, um, companies rather spend more money or sponsoring money to, to support them. And I think um, if I look at the, at, at the amount of people we want to hire in the Drupal Association right now, I see a lot of them are in the revenue team. And I think that's already um, a really good start to just have more people that can support the companies um, if they want to spend money, um, how they can spend it inside of Drupal. Because I don't believe that the money isn't there. It just takes time. To, under, to tell them and find the money. Thanks, Michael. Can I jump in here at this point, Holly? Do it. Alexia. Cool. Um, I'll try and be quick. Uh, really good comments from everyone else. Um, however, I'm, I'm surprised that a few other things weren't mentioned, to be honest. Um, I think, uh, obviously, making the most of the Drupal cons and uh, optimizing and maximizing the income streams that we already have is a good idea. Um, however, I think there's a conversation that still needs to happen about potential services that the association can offer. Um, I think that if you're looking at diversifying your income streams, and from a business perspective, all you can really do is think about you know, other income streams. Um, and one of them, in my mind, could actually be two birds with one stone in terms of providing that communication strategy around the release of each version. So for instance, uh, I've got a lot of large clients um, you know, who spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on Drupal websites and they have a really uh, strong interest in knowing where Drupal is at and where Drupal 8 is coming. I know that a lot of this information is public already, but I feel as though there'd be large organizations that'd be willing to pay extra um, to the Drupal Association in order to have perhaps a dedicated communicator who would be able to put together you know, regular reports for them that detail um, and a lot of analysis where Drupal is at, where it's going, how far is Drupal 8 away? You know, how many issues are there on the core modules? Um, I feel like there is actually a service there that could be provided that enterprise and government would pay for um, just to have a larger degree of de detail and information around Drupal strategy and technology strategy in general. Um, and finally, I think another income stream that should be talked about, um, that was talked about years and years ago. Um, I remember at DrupalCon in London, it was a big deal, and then it sort of died off, and that is specifically the idea of a premium Drupal marketplace and actually you know, commercializing a certain degree of Drupal.org and being able to sell you know, premium themes and modules there and distributions and so forth. And I know that's a highly sensitive topic, and I'm not saying it has to be that way, but if I was challenged to think about how Drupal could make more money, uh, definitely some kind of commercial marketplace would be a thought that would come to mind. Okay, I'll go Tom, next. This is Tom. Can I jump in? Let's this go. is Tom. Okay. 
Did I have both two Toms or one Tom there? Kelly. One Tom, I, oh, it's one Kelly. Tom and one Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go Kelly and then Tom. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I was going to say something very similar to what has been said before. Um, one thing, though, that I will say about being, we got to be careful with, organ, with uh, donations or contributions resulting in special benefits for for companies, uh, it kind of makes me think of uh, now that we're going to have a bunch of Drupal Association lobbyists lobbying for, you know, what what they want, um, and that and that their contribution should buy them that. Uh, one thing that I would I would think would be pretty cool would be if the Drupal Association focused on the million. All the you know, you look at all that there is to do in Drupal, and it's just uh, a treasure chest of um, potential projects, and to group those projects up, get levels of effort on them. And then sell them, sell sponsorships to them. So it's very much uh, like what um, uh, Michael was describing, um, where people can sponsor, could sponsor. We could get maybe we could get a, a level of effort on uh, some of this uh, translation uh, things that we're trying to do, and then people you could find a good fit for that. I'm sure um, uh, Lingotech is already donating a lot of their time. Um, maybe other companies would like to sign on to that. Maybe you know a little larger company, um, like a huge company, would just want to put their uh, sponsorship on a specific project, and then we can get the funding for those things and um, figure out how to organize resources to get them done. Thanks, Kelly and Tom. I think you were next up. Hello, this is Ratchet. Oh, hang on one second, Ratchet. I think we'll do Tom Grandy and yeah, then Ratchet. Yeah, this is Tom. Yep, uh, Tom, you can go. I'll probably take after that. All right, thank you, Ratchet. Hey, I'm a, a Drupal developer, but I'm a, a guy who's never going to be a core contributor like uh, many, many others. And, and we feel that we have a need that there's a place for us in the Drupal community, but you know, somehow we don't feel like we belong. Um, and there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people like me that we need to reach out to, and those new and, and fringe developers, to relieve their sense of not being good enough or large enough of a player uh, to participate, and, and by doing so, grow our community. You know, as more members join globally, the cons get bigger, the membership capital grows, and it becomes easier to get sponsorships. But uh, to get more members into the association, we need to come up with a, let's just say, a, a welcome to Drupal path that shows people uh, new to Drupal or those who are outside the bubble how to get involved and why their participation counts. It's not all about core. There are so many other areas where you know, help is definitely needed. Uh, but to make that transition easy and welcoming for, for all countries, uh, for maybe in their particular language, so the association grows globally and our association revenues grow along with it, uh, we're never going to be in a position where we can have um, offices in every country that are staffed and paid for. But you know, perhaps we can have uh, some sort of representation upstream from those different countries to country representation on the board, and then they're going to feel like they're more involved. But getting back to that small person, I really think there's hundreds of thousands of people out there like me you know, I'm a, a member, but there's a lot who aren't members just because they just don't feel like they're good enough. That's all. Thanks, Ratchet. Did you want to hop in now? Hi, this is Ratchet. I agree with the point what uh, Tom brought in, and in fact, I'll focus more on that. So what I have been seeing in my community is, uh, you know, these regional communities, the local communities are doing excellent job. They're doing, you know, a lot of awareness, and you know, they're the one who are giving you know, a lot of this informations about, uh, you know, coming on board on, you know, Drupal Association membership, you know, participating in different uh, initiatives that Drupal Association is doing, and and these local communities are doing huge, uh, you know, camps and events. I have seen, uh, you know, several camps that has happened in India, and, and you know, they have done excellent job in raising funds. So my point is that maybe uh, you know Drupal Association can have you know representation at national level or could have an office at national level, which facilitates uh, you know these camps, and you know the revenue that we generate from these events can be the fund that we can collect for Drupal project. Other way this can help is 
these local communities can also help in giving the first hand information making you know people more aware of you know what are the benefits of becoming a member you know how it how your uh, you know participation can help this project i think there is a huge potential there i i don't see a lot of people you know coming and you know becoming a member especially uh, in a growing and maturing community like india i believe this kind of model can really play a very significant role Thanks, Rajit. Uh, Chris McGrath or Enzo? Yes, I am the last. Holly? Yeah, Enzo? Uh, hi. Yep, yeah, sure. I, I, let me, let me this is Chris. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Chris. Oh, no, go ahead, Enzo. No problem. You guys are too nice to each other. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo, let's see you and then we'll finish with Chris. Yeah, McGrath. smile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> me or Chris? No, please, Enzo. Okay, okay. Uh, I think to tackle the problem of worldwide participation on that mobile grid, we don't need to create a, a big multilingual event like the Drupal Con Bogota, which was a successful event. But I think in the beginning, we need to find key players who speak the language of the country of the region we want to help. Let me, let me say about the history, how it was in, in, in Central America. The first event we have was led by a German guy, Felix de Latre, in Nicaragua. He created the first Drupal Central America, and I believe was the first international even in, uh, Drupal event in the world, where we, we have participation in about nine countries, and we have some uh, good key players. Felix was one of them. Nedjo from Civil Actions, he he did uh, some really good sessions in Spanish, not preferred Spanish, but really good Spanish, and also we uh, Felix in Bison. Uh, people interested in Drupal from Costa Rica, Panama, Mexico, Guatemala, and after that, and after, and after that event, because we have some limitation in English in the region, we, 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 we try to connect each other to try to help us to resolve the problem and to create the communication in our language. So I, I think this using this approach is is not really expensive because we we can find some disk player he do that job as a volunteer, but if you don't have the resources to do that, maybe they have the time, and then the Drupal Association could help with the expenses uh, to try to to help the, this community. And, and I think, for instance, that is something I can do um, because I speak English and Spanish, but I can go, for, for instance, to Guinea Equatorial, who is the, the unique country speaking Spanish in Africa, and if, if I do this, I, I think I, that will be the, the seed for something uh, bigger with and a small uh, investment uh, for me or for part of the Drupal Association. And I, I believe that is something we can do better in Latin America, but and also we can repeat this experience in Africa and Asia. Thanks, Enzo. Thank you, Chris. Go ahead. Thanks, Enzo. Uh, yeah, again, a um, lot of great points from everybody, and some, you know, take the words out of my mouth, but I, I think that to Enzo's points to start off, it, it is, for me, you know, to find strong regional leaders, um, even from a volunteer uh, perspective, you know, they don't have to be directors, they don't have to have any particular, uh, you know, lofty title, but I think if you find those folks like Enzo, that are in other areas that are willing to tackle that problem, at least that will begin, uh, you know, on the road of, of uh, internationalization, which it, it is a long road and it is, it is huge. I mean, I was just speaking with uh, my team in India today and uh, they were telling me about Drupal Camp Hyderabad and how, you know, there was going to be 200 people there and that, that was just tiny, you know, I mean, you know, there's nothing like Mumbai or something like that. And I was like 200 devs, you know, at, at, in a city, you know that's a lot actually and that that leads to many places so you know it, it's important to foster in places like India in the some of the app the backbones you know of the, of the delivery of the product in many cases um, you know the community and and you know I know DrupalCon's going there next year and you know and as an example however it's certainly not just the only uh, and, and so also I think that through that it's a domino effect you know where some of the things that Tom mentioned, you know, we're, we want we need to be reaching out to the students, to growing the talent pool, to 
uh, increasing the attendance attendance of decons, so that you know we we are strengthening one of our key revenue sources. But then again, to Alex's point, where you know we are also creating other products and and diversifying. Uh, we have the job board now. That's a strong one. I'm, I'm certain it certainly should have happened. I think you could similarly roll out something. Uh, I, I hope this isn't exactly what Alex said. But it was you know something to the effect of a training marketplace. Uh, I agree with that. You know, if you, you use the leverage that the association has for brand awareness, uh, you know, to help the little guys as they have, you know, in the past with the product itself, um, I think that's just going to be a good thing to perpetuate. Uh, I think you could do the same from a support offering perspective, you know, almost a paid volunteer. I mean, we're not all maybe going to get what we would out there in the marketplace, but we're supporting the product. We're healing one of the biggest uh, uh, gaps in the product and you know we're doing that at the association grassroots level rather than you know uh, some lullabots or whoever the corporation is that's you know uh, offering that formally um, so you know that as well as the corporate sponsors and I, I remember uh, uh, you know some of the, the lobbying comments and I think that you know again if there is corporate sponsorships are key not only from a code sponsorship level but from a donation perspective so clearly you know there needs to be at least some small teams surrounded around cultivating steering and you know making sure that that is a success and I would say similarly but separately uh, in the grant department um, for any nonprofit as mentioned earlier it's it's we, we are a group of volunteers. We are a group of volunteers that, that has such uh, uh, skill and, and, you know, highly paid in, uh, um, talents. You know, we certainly should be able to find some experienced grant writers, I would think, that, you know, uh, can help us. So that, that would be my thoughts. Thanks, Chris. Thank Victor, do you want to round us out with a few words? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So my suggestion is to use uh, crowdfunding uh, manner so Drupal Association can publish, I think, uh, can publish a uh, project uh, for crowdfunding like Kickstarter and uh, Drupalistas will uh, fund this uh, by project uh, the direction. Yeah, this is simple, I think. That's all, thank you. All right, you guys. Uh, we are going to take a cue from Victor and enter a lightning round because uh, we've only got about uh, 35 minutes left in the call and I want to make sure we get to another couple of questions because I do have some from the community here. So we're going to do our best to keep our answers super brief here because uh, we have so many of us here today. But here is the question uh, for you guys. Um, in that last round of answers, we had a lot of different funding ideas for the association. And thank you very much. I wrote them down. <laughs> Things to think about for sure. Uh, but um, uh, one of the things that uh, one of the communities that the association and the Drupal community doesn't really cater to much right now are Drupal uh, businesses that use Drupal, right? So Drupal customers, right? Not developers, not agencies, uh, the end users of Drupal. Um, should we be incorporating those end users into the community more? And what can we do to bring them to the community? Um, if that's the question. And remember, we're going to try to answer in lightning round format. So, and Holly, this is Howard Jacobs again. If go I for can. it, Howard. Real, really, really quickly, I, I, 15 years ago, I was the senior business development executive for one of the largest publicly traded open source companies. And I've since moved on from that. But uh, the key, in my view, to getting customers connected to the community is enabling the consultants, development houses, uh, development shops with great information about Drupal because businesses are interested in their business. Technology is just a tool. So if we give our developer community, our consultant community, great information, great resources to educate their customers, we leverage the investment the association make to reach out to a much, much larger uh, group of end users than we could in any other way. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'll go, I'll I'd love to add to that. Uh, sorry, who should go, Holly? Uh, let's right, me? Sorry, I'll be very fast. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and um, 
Sorry, guys. Let's go ahead and go with Alex. Okay, I'm, I'm going to very, uh, you know, um, this is a topic I'm very, very passionate about, and I've got some strong ideas on it. I feel as though we need to be outreaching not only to business businesses in general and end users and the wider stakeholder community. I feel as though the web resources and Drupal.org could do a far better job of facilitating this. I also feel as though we could actually be uh, zeroing in on specific communities of practice and giving them more tools and resources, such as Drupal for hospitals, Drupal for government, Drupal for entertainment, Drupal for uh, the school down the road, um, you know, Drupal for young web designers. I feel as though you could actually segment off certain parts of the Drupal website, Drupal.org website and provide specific resources for them. For instance, if you want to make a, a website for a non-profit or environmental agency, uh, you know, Drupal has a lot of distributions and themes and modules available that can help that, but finding them all in one place and finding a resource that's perfect for an administrator of a nonprofit is actually quite hard. So I feel as though we could actually be making targeted resources that are better for specific communities of practice. Hello, this is Richard. I agree with Alex's point. Uh, uh, many of the interaction that I had had, uh, you know, with the community members, uh, you know, the, the one of the big challenges that end users are facing, you know, they're they're not aware of what what's available. Uh, had an interaction with a professor uh, in an institution, and they were trying to use Drupal for their uh, institution website, but they find it very challenging, and they had to consult a shop, Drupal shop, which was very costly. So making them more aware, giving them uh, more resources, information, and how easily they can you know use Drupal, consume Drupal. I think it's already there. It's just a matter of you know giving them the right set of information. I, I think you know that's my point. Okay, I'll uh, I'll jump in. This, oh, is, this Kelly. is Tom. <laughs> Tom and Kelly. Let's go, Kelly. Then Tom, go, Kelly. you are in sync, man. <laughs> yeah, we just we're just ready to talk at the same time. Um, well, the way that I've seen it work really well is the Drupal marketplace. Um, I think is a really beautiful thing that is. It, there's already efforts going into making that even more effective, um, and I think that's working great. Um, so more of that, I think, would help. Um, but then I would also say something about the way, another way I see it working is a lot of times when a customer is a good fit for Drupal, it's because they have something fairly complicated that they want to do, something a little bit outside what, you know, WordPress could do or some, or some you know, service, website service platform can do. And really what they're looking for is just somebody who's really smart, a, pro, a, pro, a top-notch programmer, because the complicated thing that they want to accomplish needs the right tools for the job to be used. And a lot of times, most of the times uh, from what I see, those programmers and, and web developers want to use Drupal because they see how it's a good fit. So getting uh, more consultants, more uh, programmers into Drupal will get more people recommending Drupal to those customers knowing about Drupal and being able to see that it is the most elegant way to do so many comple complex and complicated things. So it's not directly finding ways to um, target a customer and get and connect them to Drupal, but it's enabling and empowering uh, web developers and programmers to know and recommend Drupal as a solution. Tom. Okay, hi there. This is Tom. Hi, this is Angel. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Go for it, Tom. And then we're going to go to one of the Chris's. <laughs> okay. You know, call me concerned, but I'm not so sure that we want to bring businesses into the community because the voice of the individual developer who feels empowered in the association becomes lost to larger businesses who could start influencing the voice of the association. Uh, to me, the association is about the community of users, not the community for the businesses that have the deepest pockets. I mean, their their money is important, but I don't know that I necessarily want them being part of the association. Great. Which Chris uh, wants, wanted to go there. next? Can I completely disagree with that? <laughs> um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna let Michael completely disagree because that sounds interesting. 
I, I think I would completely disagree with that. I want to see everybody that does has anything to do with Drupal. I want to see being part of the community. And I brought my own clients to Drupal cons to see that they can see what the community currently is. And I can tell you, they so much more loved it. They so much more understood what open source is, what DrupalCon is, what Drupal is, that they went back to their bosses and told them, like, we need to do more with open source. And so I think it's really important that we get everybody that has something to do with Drupal in the communities, understand what it is, and at the end, spread the word about Drupal and, do, and let us do more websites with it. This is Chris McGrath. I, I agree with Michael, and uh, I thought of, you know we heard that before. Uh, I mean, corporations with money uh, usually helps Drupal. You know, I mean, look at Omni Media, Martha Stewart. I mean, these accomplish major goals with major funds because they have goals, and then they leave it behind for us. So, you know, usually I would say that can't be too bad of a problem. Uh, I believe, as I mentioned earlier, we probably need some governance around it, but important. Uh, should we involve the end client, you know, as Alex was saying, absolutely, absolutely. We, we need to, you know, promote quality, ensure quality, give constant assurances in every way, similar to these educational ideas that Alex had mentioned, just in general, constant outreach so that, you know, someone who heard WordPress was easier uh, and, and they may be a client and then they may go on to tell whomever in their midst that Drupal is what they're using is what we need. That's what this is, organic growth. Uh, and, and so I just feel like, you know, we have to do that, uh, promote constant organic growth and just answer needs. I mean, that's how the client will come to you. The end user will come to you via a need. I need training. They made me adopt Drupal from high up. Uh, I need support. I'm not sure it, what will happen. You know, I mean, Drupal to me is, we need our own FDIC, you know, as others have said, you know, people have millions invested in this, major, major dollars. They need security and, you know, Acquia can't be the only game in town, nor should it be in my opinion. Can I can I agree and disagree? <laughs> Absolutely. You can you can if you tell me who no, you sorry, are. sorry, not with you. With the, with the sorry, it's Adam. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, no. I, just in terms of the the uh, agree and disagree in terms of them being involved, I guess I think there's there's different spaces for different people. An amazing place to for for clients, for end users to bring pretty much anyone. It's just an amazing place in general. Um, I'm not sure, for example, the issue queues of Drupal.org is exactly the place where, where those people want to be. So I think there's there's kind of, we have to be aware of wh which places are for the right people. And if you look at maybe what what uh, Dries has done with Drupal.com and, and then think about in terms of what, what you want the end user to be looking at and the kind of information you want them to be seeing, then I think, uh, uh, yeah, we need, we need to choose wisely the places where, where those people go. But I, 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 I do absolutely agree that I think that the idea of the end user being involved is kind of paramount. I mean, it's a, those, are the, those, those people are the people who are going to make Drupal more of a kind of household name. And, and we... And I think that also from the association point of view, that's about also educating or helping to educate or supporting um, the agencies to be much more clear about the fact that they're using Drupal, what Drupal is to the end user, as much as it is about kind of the Drupal association trying to reach out to the end user, because I don't think that's a, a kind of very realistic proposition. Uh, but I think the kind of multiplier effect and giving giving support to the agencies to to, to really reach out to those uh, to those end users is uh, would be really time and money well spent. Thanks, Adam. Hi, Please. Canadian Chris here. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, I'm chuckling. That's awesome. Carry on. <laughs> Well, it's one way. Chris Luck, our Canadian Chris, it all it all works. Um, so, so Drupal is inclusive. Um, so the idea of not uh, allowing different entities to get involved with with the Drupal community, I think, is probably wrong. Um, it's just a matter of how to organize how all of that works and to cater to the the different uh, end users properly, whether it's you know developers, businesses, clients, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, people will come to Drupal because they want to come to Drupal. Historically, I think that's been the case with Drupal. Uh, 
Drupal doesn't necessarily reach out per se. Uh, people are coming to Drupal, companies are coming to Drupal for their business needs to make money, save money, save time, and, and that sort of thing. So it's it's a matter of how to cater to them properly. And, and I actually think the seeds of this are already in place with the Persona series um, because that's a gateway to a content strategy for Drupal.org that can um, reorganize the information that's on the site and engineer it so that it goes to the right audience at the right time. So how that all works is it's a pretty complex, um, uh, uh, you know, pot to, to stir, but um, I do think those seeds are already there with, with the Persona series and, and building on that and, and engineering the content to uh, get to them properly. So when people come to Drupal.org, uh, you know, usually via Google searches or whatever, if they're not knee deep in the project already, um, they will get to the information they want quickly, whether it is siphoning off different areas and siloing them for, for specific use cases, maybe that's the way, or maybe, you know, doing it all within the home page and then filtering it out from there or whatever. Um, but those are decisions that would have to be uh, made and dealt with appropriately. Um, but I do think some, some of the seeds are there for sure. And it's just continuing to nurture that properly so that um, um, those, those, you know, people reaching into Drupal or, you know, outreach and the content uh, matching their, their needs is, uh, is dealt with properly. Thanks, Canadian Chris. <laughs> no problem, man. <laughs> Holly, if I may. Uh, hi, yeah. this is Enzo. Enzo, why don't you go ahead and go? Okay, uh, but the question how we can involve end users to Drupal community, I think we can provide tools uh, to allow users to propose new features using tools like a uh, user voice. So in my, in my idea is if suddenly the, the end users, they see new features they propose included in Drupal, this is a direct message. We are listening to our end users. Also, I, I love the idea of Alice about to create documentation for vertical business, and I think we can materialize that, uh, materialize that and found, uh, uh, founding some distributions to attack uh, the vertical business. Thank you. Thanks, Enzo. And I think um, I think Victor is the only one I think. Oh, this not. is Tom, if I may. Oh, Tom, go for it. Sorry, I missed you. Oh, I, I just wanted to clarify. You know, I don't believe businesses should be an influential part of governance because users like me end up feeling like our voice is no longer going to be heard. You know, to bring clients to a con, to educate them, for them to see the power of the community is fantastic, but not as part of the association. You know, if they're I, I just want to clarify that. Gotcha. That definitely makes sense, and I appreciate you uh, taking a moment to clarify that. And then I think Victor, you are the only other person. Uh, did you want to have some add something here? Yeah. Okay. I'm here. So from my mind, absolutely agree that we should uh, promote Drupal to also to users. Yeah, it will. Uh, it will uh, let us to have Drupal more popular. Yeah, and we will have more users. We will have uh, more uh, clients. Uh, yeah, we will have more projects. So that's all. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, you guys. I think um, many of you got the lightning round thing down. Good job. Uh, I think if we apply those principles one more time, we can ask one more question from the community here on the call, which I'd love to get to, because um, it's something we haven't talked about in any of the other calls either, and that is about um, the age of our community <laughs> and bringing, speaking of bringing new people in, so we, we've talked a little bit about um, geographic diversity, we've talked about diversity in terms of the types of folks that are engaged in the project. Um, what about the next generation of Drupal developers? How do we bring in all the cool kids who might be thinking that Ruby is somehow more exciting than PHP? Hello, everybody. This is Richard. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, you know uh, one of the initiatives that we are working on, something called Drupal Campus Ambassador Program where we are trying to reach out to educational institutions uh, and you know trying to build a kind of ecosystem where we find some open source evangelists in these 
uh, educational institutions who form a kind of uh, you know committee and you know promote Drupal, evangelize Drupal within their uh, you know campus and uh, you know these persons are called campus ambassadors like we have Google ambassadors and ambassadors so these are going to be you know Drupal ambassadors and we already started you know tying up with you know few universities here the idea is to get Drupal uh, you know Drupalers at that level you know when when they are really learning the new concepts they're learning the engineering concepts and they are the one who can actually you know, without worrying about the pressure of work and, you know, a lot of nitty-gritties around, you know, uh, managing, you know, other stuffs of the work, they can involve with the community, they can contribute back, they can prove to be the next generation, you know, the the, 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 you know, the biggest contributor from, you know, uh, um, you know, all over the, the regions. So I think, you know, this kind of initiatives could uh, you know uh, lead to bring a lot of new brains, newbies, and that could you know resolve a lot of issues. One of the biggest issues that uh, I hear in these communities, Drupal resources, the scarcity of Drupal resources. So a lot of industry, a lot of companies are you know really interested in you know these initiatives. So that is my take. Hi, uh, Canadian Chris here. Um, I've got a couple of points um, that kind of speak to this whole idea of reaching out to a more youthful um, attendance, I guess, or participation in the, in the Drupal community. Um, so, uh, slight digression, but as part of organizing a large the Drupal North event that's coming up, uh, we ha uh, tried to ensure that it was hosted at a educational facility, Ryerson University in, in our situation here. And we've always tried to do that too, because then we're hopefully going to cater to students and uh, um, you know that demographic, I suppose. And one of the first questions I asked the, the venue is, how do we get your student population to get involved in the in the conference? How do we get them to attend? So so that's part of it, too, uh, outreaching at events and trying to target those uh, those kinds of facilities and, and events and, and audiences, um, marketing in some respect to those. Um, to that demographic, I really I don't know how to do it other than actually having events there and that kind of thing. But um, some some sort of a marketing uh, campaign uh, about about uh, you know getting uh, students involved with Drupal. Um, from a developer perspective, the the cool features in Drupal 8 that that I'm looking forward to are things that that might excite students. Um, you know, getting to work with cool things in a, in a headless Drupal kind of configuration or, or whatnot. And maybe that again is part of the marketing concept or, or just uh, sharing that knowledge uh, throughout uh, communities outside Drupal. Um, and I can think of a couple of specific cases where companies are actually specifically hiring out of colleges and universities um, so that they can train raw talent and get them to use Drupal. So somehow encouraging companies to do that or creating some kind of incentive for companies to do that um, is maybe one way the DA can help out. Uh, you know, those are just some, some quick ideas, some quick thoughts. Thanks, Chris. Anyone else want to hop in? And hey, Holly, this is Howard. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Howard. This is Howard Jacobson, if you don't mind, Holly. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Um, the, the, Cool thing about this conversation that we're having today, and that the association has every day, is that uh, it's the same conversation that's been had many times by many different kinds of businesses trying to figure out how to grow their business. And 15 years ago, Linux was having this conversation. I was at the table listening to the very same sorts of discussions, and I think the key for the association to manage its limited resources is to look back at how other projects like Linux were successful and not successful. Uh, we did things right 15 years ago, we did things wrong. Uh, but one of the things we definitely did right was turn Linux into a, a worldwide powerful uh, technology, not just for big business and not just for you know uh, hackers. Um, there's something for everybody in Linux. Um, and I'd say the community there is as vibrant as it has ever been. Um, and I'm sure that Drupal uh, can learn a lot from what others have done and stand on their shoulders. Thank you. Yeah, really well, well, that one. Uh, I think Alex was trying to hop in there next. So <laughs> if, we go, if we go to Alex Matthews. Okay. 
first. Okay, I'll be I'll be very quick. Um, I completely agree with all those points. I feel as though the reality on the ground. I mean, coolness happens uh, on the ground with real people. I mean, recently I've taken on uh, three new interns and two new uh, themers, uh, none of which had ever used Drupal at all. They had no idea about it, and they'd heard bad things about it. To them, it wasn't cool. Um, but as soon as they started using it, as soon as they got some basic training and some basic education, they instantly fell in love. And I see this happening all the time with new adopters to Drupal. I think the barrier to it being cool is just people getting into it. It's like criticizing a TV series you've never actually watched. Um, so I feel like, at the end of the day, that is going to be facilitated on the ground. I feel that the best way for the association to help would involve, uh, similar to what we were talking about yesterday, in terms of uh, supporting local chapters, supporting local meetups, supporting the sort of culture heroes that actually push Drupal out. Uh, there's a lot of resources that could be developed as well online, but I really feel as though uh, engaging with local communities, universities, high schools, providing training opportunities, um, and potentially adding a new role on Drupal.org for a local chapter organizer that would allow them to have a communications network and extra resources available to help them in the advocacy of Drupal. So yeah, I feel as though that's something that the community needs to do, and that it needs to happen on the ground. This is Chris McGrath. I can jump in. Hi, this is Tom. Um, let's go, oh, let's go Chris and then Tom, if that sounds good. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with Richie, and, and I agree, um, you know, with Alex as well. I, I you have, you know, I, I myself have um, taken steps to. I, I mean, I want to get everybody I know into Drupal, basically. I'm talking to my waiter. You, you work with WordPress part time? Forget that. Drupal. You know, et cetera, et cetera. And it is that kind of passionate thing. When you know, we went to revive the the, the user group here um, in our area, which is the state capital of our state. Um, you know, it, it's important. It's important that government here is aware of Drupal, knows it's strong, knows it's thriving. We did also take concerted efforts, such as Chris did, you know, to make sure. Oh, actually, we were lucky. The only folks that were really paying any attention were like the academics, and we happened to have a few colleges. But but taking that, you know, we formed our own nonprofit, DrupalInstitute.org, and got together with Chris from Build a Module and just said, hey, you know, you've got content, we need to get certifications, we need to get people out there, we need to get study groups, you know, it can't all be controlled by Acquia, um, you know, the, the one, you know, uh, financed entity. Uh, you know, what can Dries do to get involved in things like code.org? So we are, you know, taking it from the college. Uh, CS department level out to the marketing departments, you know, where we get the other 50% of our decision makers uh, for client uh, contracts, and, and down to, you know, the, the high schools and the middle schools. I mean, my, my kids are six and nine, and they're hearing from Zuckerberg, you know, how to animate uh, an Angry Bird across the screen, and they're coding, and they're doing this, and you know, by the time they're 15, I mean, they'll be building what I do, for crying out loud. So, you know, it, it is possible, and it is, and I don't believe also, just within the youth. I think we've got a lot of PHP developers out there still that have not been sold on Drupal and are not sure, are not, uh, you know, helping to contribute to grow the talent pool, which in reality is really, if we want to answer what what is the other biggest barrier to product success, it's that. Again, lack of resources, as Rich had said. You know, it, it, we really, every day, I mean, uh, basically think about what can we do? And, uh, you know, other than to reach out, cultivate, create scholarships, you know, et cetera, what, you know, that's it. It's an on the ground thing, basically, as well as the marketing campaigns. I think that is a fantastic idea also that Alex has had amongst many. Hi, this is Tom. Thanks, Tom. Go for it. Hi, this is Tom. When I first came to Drupal, it was an eye-opener for me watching kids camp on laptops at DrupalCons huddled in the halls. It was really cool to see, but they've gone from being the majority to the minority at a lot of these cons. You know, once the suits started showing up, the kids started disappearing, and I can't imagine the kids in camo shorts and the skater shirts started wearing suits as they became more immersed in the, the Drupal community. But as Alex said, schools are really a, a great place to start. I personally taught high school for 10 years and have helped vocational schools start web development classes before I even heard of Drupal. You know, here in the United States, there are vocational schools and comprehensive high schools 
with teachers who, in many cases, have no curriculum to follow when it comes to web development. You know, just as Cisco grabbed a, a foothold in these schools, so can Drupal. And there's a huge outreach in, right now for programmers with uh, Code.org that we could jump on the bandwagon with right now. I'd love to see the Drupal Association reach out to schools worldwide to help kids become viable candidates for Drupal jobs by bringing Drupal into the schools. Thank you. Love that. Michael or? Hey, Holly, that's Michael. Yeah. I think. Yes. Um, I think one other important thing is what happens right now with Drupal 8. Before Drupal 7, we as a Drupal community had our own little let's call it unicorn, that like especially the other PHP developers didn't really like or they talked bad about it because like everybody knows the learning curve, if you type in Drupal learning curve in Google, how that looks. And I think with Drupal 8 we, we started um, to come together with the PHP community. We have now symphony tracks on, um, on our Drupal cons. We had in Amsterdam where I was part of the team, we, we the first time had a PHP track, which was not specifically about Drupal, it was about PHP. So the PHP community comes together, and I think that's also really important that we, as a Drupal association, also start to talk to the other associations inside of PHP to just get people being involved in PHP and not like Ruby. Um, so, because if the people can program PHP, and maybe they learn PHP with Symfony, for them, it's really easy to jump over to Drupal because all the things they know from the state-of-the-art programming languages, as we know it from Symfony, they can use in Drupal. So it's just much easier for them um, to work with. So I think as a Drupal Association, we should use the momentum right now that happens and, um, and bring that in to talk to others and educate people about, about PHP in general. And of course, this can happen in schools. Um, where the people are, because I clearly um, would um, say that the, the, these people, they don't go to cons. We should go to them, and that happens at the, at the schools and the, and the universities. Thanks, Michael. Adam or Kelly or Enzo? I'll go. Yeah, I can go. Adam? I think that was Kelly first. Oh, Let's get yeah, Kelly. Yeah, you can go. Yeah, this is this is Kelly. Um, I really like the idea of uh, putting together curriculum. Um, it's an expansion of a simpler idea that I've been thinking about would be cool. A lot of times in in our uh, local Drupal group, which uh, meets every month, um, rain or shine, it's hard. It it does really well when there's an agenda, and it's hard to always to, to make sure that there's a good agenda. When you have a good agenda, more people come. When you don't, when you have an agenda that's basically just saying leave the agenda items in the comments and nobody comments, then you know the same few people come and then it just becomes a you know event about work thing. But uh, so to fix that, one of the things I was thinking it would be cool is if there were a collection of you know things you could do a presentation on, you know, a, a 15 minute slide deck um, that could be you know a, a pool of things for. For people to draw from to to do a, to you know to work on their presentation skills or to you know to add to an agenda to just run through different things uh, and I think that that could grow into a curriculum and um, I think it'd be really cool if the Drupal Association put some resources into that effort. Thank you. Hey, it's Adam. Um, so yeah, this is a really I love this question completely. It's uh, I, I come from a non-formal education uh, background. I've done a lot of uh, educational work. Our company gives training in universities uh, and and started to work with schools now. Uh, there is actually an open. It's called Open Drupal, a curriculum being developed in the UK. I think the hardest thing with this is is globalizing it. I think that in every country you're going to have a different scenario. But I think probably one of the biggest things for me is is getting the the young people when they're really young, like when they're kids. And I think part of that is actually about changing the approach in how you introduce people to Drupal. So it's not really about a curriculum. It's not about formal education. It's about creating a non-formal space where people bring their laptops. Like in the we we had a code at Dojo recently where where uh, the the young people were using Scratch. Scratch is an entry into PHP. Uh, sorry, into Python uh, and I guess into PHP as well. 
Um, but because Scratch is a completely different approach, uh, if we could develop something around Drupal in terms of site building, information architecture, thinking about what are without having even specifically initially to touch uh, Drupal in its in the form that we know it as. Uh, I think this is where we could really get uh, uh, young people involved. It's the accessibility to to the concepts and the really quite complex things that are involved in in what Drupal is. Um, so for me, one of the things we're working with with a local school is uh, is to to come up with an idea, maybe of a distribution, uh, or as I say, maybe even something uh, built in a slightly different way that's really accessible to the youngest kids. And then that that's like the stepping stone into into Drupal. I don't think curriculums are, are great, but they're very formal. And and I think the way most people learn Drupal is not sitting with one book or one curriculum. It's finding all the resources out there and, and, and being pointed in the right directions and then learning the other bits for themselves. Um, this is something I could talk about all, all day, but uh, I'll leave it there. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. And I think Enzo and Hi, Victor. Enzo. Yeah, Enzo. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Well, this is a huge question and I think um, the best thing we are doing that right now is using the global uh, training days uh, so uh, uh, mixing uh, and I agree with, with Michael would say right now in Drupal A we have a, a really attractive tools like Symfony, Backbone and others and now we can or soon we will create we will be able to create some headless tools so in terms of fancy tools I think we are okay and I think we just need to uh, as, a, as a first step is include a little more structure in Drupal uh, uh, training days, providing more resources to, to organize in Drupal training days to prepare people in universities to, to use the new changes in the, in the platform for Drupal A. Uh, that is my, my, big, my initial idea to try to bring new resources uh, to Drupal community. Thanks. Victor, you want to get the last word in? I don't know if we yeah, lost. sure. So my, so my main thought is to have a more Drupal events. The more Drupal events, the more people attend them, the more people know something new about Drupal. Yeah. So the more events we have, the more people we will involve. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. All right, you guys. Well, could have been a comedy of errors. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for for putting up with me uh, at the beginning of this call and for wading through um, the no you go, no you go portion of the call as well. I love how polite you guys are with each other. And I think one of the, the my favorite parts of this experience is just um, is has been seeing how supportive you are of each other and how that is so indicative of the Drupal community in general. So thanks for, thanks for being awesome humans, huh? Um, so to, to wrap up for us today, uh, you know, this is the last meet the candidate session. Um, we'll post it, uh, the recording online along with the others as well. Um, uh, but definitely doesn't have to be the end of your, um, communication with the community or the community's communication with you. Um, we have lots more opportunities for that. Um, your candidate profile pages come with these handy dandy uh, comment features uh, down here. I apparently got logged out, uh, but if you're logged into the association uh, site, uh, you can actually uh, leave a comment for a, a question for the candidates. Um, candidates, keep an eye out over the next few days and please respond to folks as they have questions for you. Um, and that period will end, and on March 9th, we will do voting. So voting will open up on March 9th. And just as a reminder to everyone, we use the uh, instant runoff version of voting, uh, instant runoff voting process, sorry, uh, for our elections. Um, and we've got to, you can look that up online. There's a couple great videos that explain it. Uh, but essentially, you'll be able to rank your candidate choices. So although we have only one seat open for a two-year term in this election, uh, you'll be able to rank your favorite candidates, um, and we'll use those rankings to determine the winner. Um, so voting is open March 9th through March 20th. Uh, we will then download all the votes, run them through the 
software, get our result, get that ratified by the board, and have a public announcement out by March 25th. So I think that is it. And for now, I'll just say to everyone out there, uh, to the candidates again, thank you so much for putting yourselves out there, for the passion with which you answered all these questions here today. And good luck to everyone. If you need anything in the meantime, you guys know where to find me, I hope. Thanks, and have a great one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Holly.